I want to show you the difference uh, between the regular blade, which we call, this is called DL, the red laryngoscopy, right, which we visualize, versus this is the gyroscope, and this is a video device. So this is a hype, this is actually, this one is the hyperangulated blade, and this is the normal geometry. This is the one you regularly integrate that we've been practicing. Okay, right. And this That's has a different geometry, right? You notice? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we pre it and we did all those steps. Right. And I'm going to go strictly to, you know, uh, the integration procedure. Let me put some gloves because there is some movement in it. So the technique is different. Uh, can, can anyone think why the technique may be different? For the video? For, for specifically the hyperangulated blade. Why, why will the technique be different? Because the angle of the, t of the blade is a little... Uh, more acute. More, right? yeah, exactly. So, so what, what will that be? What's the problem with that? You cannot insert it the way you normally would with the... With the tube, right? The, the tube, tube is harder to introduce. Right? Uh, and something I want to show you, this is actually, uh, I want to see if it actually will take, the, the, these devices, they have a recording feature. So that means oh. is they, they have like a USB, which you could record. So do you, why do you think that may be beneficial? So recording bug degree. For, um, so you can see the mistakes that you made? So mistakes, or more importantly, not for saying mistakes. Let's but like to show review. evidence that you did it right. So if you wanted to review the case later on, right, and your technique that you employed. So basically, the video that's recording is basically recording from the tip from here, right? So everything that's done is recording every single move, right? So I'm going to, this is your regular standard geometry. I'm going to switch it to the hyperangulated plane. And I'm going to put the board. You see everything on the screen, right? So this is my tube, right? And this is my syringe. Let's say I have you hold it next to me, right? So here, what you want to do is we're going to use a scissor technique, usually one and three. So what I'm saying one and three is your thumb and your middle finger, right? So the thumb opens the mandible, and this goes in the maxilla. So I'm basically opening the mouth. This gives me a very wide opening. If I use one right on the index, it's not as much of an opening as this and this. Right here, I can r really open them out. Okay. And then this, this hyperangulated blade, you're basically holding with your three fingers, thumb and two fingers. And what you're doing is, the first step is always find the landmarks, right? So the first landmarks I see is what? Uvula. I'm going to go forward, right? And then I'm gliding on the top. What's the next landmark I want to see? Okay, the glass. I'm going to sit this blade in the molecular space. And when I do it, right, I'm going to engage the hyoglottic ligament to expose the vocal cords. But you see on, on the screen, right? On this screen, on this screen, uh -huh. this is the best view, right? What this flap is, is basically it's from the mannequin. You see yeah. how it's not glued? Yeah. But we're looking at the structure past it. You see how I see the vocal cords? Yeah. yeah. With a hyperangulated blade, you do not want to have this 100% view. When I say 100% view, is the full not? vocal cord. I'll show you why. So I'm going to take out the, right? I'm going to take the ET tube. I put it in the hockey stick position. So I have 100% view. Look what happens when they try to introduce. Where does this go? Oh, oh, it's going into the main. It goes where? Esophagus. 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 It goes to the stomach, right? Okay. But now look, what I do is I drop my angle a little bit, right? So I have a 50% view. I look on my screen. Okay. What I'm saying, 50% view. So this is 100. Full. Yeah. This is like 50%. Yeah. You can still know that it's going in there. Right? So when I come in, now, now I can. Sometimes what happens if you cannot advance for it, all you do is you pop your stylet up. It makes the tip softer. So I pop my oh, stomach up, and then okay. I can introduce the fold, right? Yeah. And then I look at the t at the marking of the lip line. This was a 7.5, so roughly maybe 22, 23 at the lip line, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So that, that's what I noticed. So the key hallmark, right? So let me just take it out just to show you again. Uh, I'm going to put this back to the hockey stick position. So this is the hyperangulated blade, mm -hmm. right? And what you're doing is, again, cross-finger technique, right? That's... The first step is finding the landmark. Second step is exposing the vocal cords, 50%. Third step is introducing the two. So, uvula, that's the first landmark, right? Walk down the tongue. What's the next landmark? Uh, Apple glass. Apple glass. Sit where? where? Well, like the right? Mm -hmm. So now, do I want this? No. 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 Right? I want this. Yeah. So then I take the tube, 
And the best part about this, right, is I can see it on the screen. Meaning, if, yeah. and I'm recording it. So if I if I don't introduce it right, it's going to record that it's in the wrong place, right? Mm. So walk forward, right? And then if the tip doesn't advance forward, like right now, what I do is I just pop this stylus up, makes it soft. I can go forward. 23, 24 the lift line, right? And what I usually do is. I like to take out my stylet, not up, don't yank it up. Take it out towards the feet slowly. Why do I want to do this? Because less chance of dislodging the person. Right? So towards the feet slowly, right? And then I have my blade in there just to make sure I did not take it out, right? You inflate your cuff. How much? Just enough so that your pilot balloon, right, is firm. Right? And that's it. I take it out and then we can connect the DVM to confirm. So connect the DVM here. Right. Uh, and you want to have what connected to it? Capnography, right? So remember, every time I tell you, right, this, the, if I was going to document it from my share, I always write, I saw the tube go through the vocal cords, I visualized it, right? I then want to also say I have my lung sounds left and right, I'm looking for bilateral lung sounds. So that's, both of those are subjective criteria. But now I want to record the objective criteria. What's the objective criteria? And title. And title CO2 and what other objective criteria I got? SPO2. SPO2, right? So always write that down, right? So this this is this. I want to show you, right? The next thing I want to show you the bougie, right? So we can disconnect this. Uh, can you see if there's a bougie there? So what's what's uh what's the purpose of the bougie? Act as a guide. Uh, just hold this in your hand. Act as a guide, right? So, so ideally, there was a driver study in Germa they published it. They did the first class and they had much better success with the bougie. So, with the, another name for bougie is on the tracheal tube introducer, right? So, which what you want to do is this, right? So, we're going to use a cross finger technique. And let's say I was again going this on the first try. I'm going to show you this is my walk cords, and I want to specifically make 100% of you because I want to put it in the stomach. If I'm on the stomach, you see how far I can go? You see how I can bury it? In? There's no stoppage. Right. So what I want to see, if I'm in the vocal cords, I'm going to have what? I'm going to have hold up. Yeah. I'm going to have hold up. So look, I'm going to go take this out, 50% you, and I'm going to introduce it right in the trachea, right? Everybody's in the trachea? Yeah. 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 Look what happens. Uh, I know Will said he was, he was looking for the clicks, but clicks is not a really good marker. What is the best marker? Is this hold up? Yeah, where's the hold up actually occurring? On the crina. Uh, not the crina. It's, it's a good thought process, right? Crina, it's where the lungs bifurcate, the right? Left and right. right. But usually it goes in the right main stem. Yeah. Why does it go into right main stem? Because, because, because it's bigger. bigger. Yeah, right. bigger. So that's what we want. We want the hold up. And then the thing is, we're going to now lace the tube over. You see how my blade is in place? I need to have it in place in order to facilitate tube delivery. Right? Okay. So, so as I go, grab the tip of the bougie, and what you do is, if you feel resistant, it's probably the tip of the tube is getting caught on the wall cords. You pull back, rotate, right, and then you advance forward. Right? And then again, I look at 22, uh, 23, uh, the lift line, right? And then, you start. and then what I do is, right, yeah, I take out this, the bougie, right? And then, right? and then I reconfirm my uh, stuff, right? So with the bougie, what's, what's the goal? Is you want to have hold up if you're in the right place, right? Hold up is where? Right main stem. Right main stem, right? right. And then if you if it was in the wrong location, you basically bury the bougie. You're not gonna have any hold up, right? What's the benefit of using the bougie? It helps guide the tube in. And if you have, let's say, I'll show you why it's re really good, right? So I'm gonna take this out. Sometimes when you, when you when we when we intubate, right, and you you had the positioning right, ear to the sternal lunge, everything you did right, right. But instead of having this view when you go with your direct laryngoscopy, you may have this type of view. You see how it, it's like it's not you can't really see. All I see is the the notch, the posterior notch, right? Right. I don't see this type of view. I see this view. And with this view, if I have a bougie, I can still intubate. Why? Because I'm going to get hold up. So I can still introduce. Ah, right? And if you keep going yeah. down, you know you're in the stomach, so you know you. That is correct. And I'm just going to show you. So, so you see this technique, and then I'm going to show you that uh, lane. So this was I was talking to you about, right? This, this, this is what you were guys using, direct laryngoscopy, mm -hmm. directly visualizing. Right. Right. This is the same. This is called standard geometry. This is also standard geometry. This is hyperangulated, right? This is hyper acute geometry. So I'm going to show you if I connect with this blade. Right? So you still have the benefit of, of the video, however, what you can also do with this blade is 
right? If you're having issues, you could actually look inside because it's going to mimic the actual, right, uh, regular standard geometry plate. So, cross finger technique coming from the side. And again, what I'm trying to do? Landmark. I'm trying, so I'm trying to landmark. So I see the what? No, I have the glottis and I insert into the molecular. And I visualize, right? And you see how here, right, I actually have the appropriate, right? Yeah. right? So here, you would need a stylet, right? So put the stylet in, right? So the benefit with this blade, right, you could have it on video where you could use it on the video, right? But also, right, I can use direct laryngoscopy. So if I'm having issues, I can just look here, and then I have the... To for the delivery. So what I'm saying is, I saw it all go in, and the benefit of this, if let's say, was uh, somebody was training me, right? Like let's say a senior paramedic, he was here. They will be looking at that and saying, yeah, you were. You follow what I'm saying? So so that's basically the use of your same plate. You do the same thing. Uh, so what's the benefit of having it not being hyper acute? You could basically use your eyes to follow through, like it's the same thing, right? So this is the fiber optic plate. This is, I think, is a three. This is a four. That's five rockies for coochie, right? Yeah, yeah. He he brought him in, uh, and then we got the hyper acute blade, right? Take yeah, you can take it off. Hyper acute blade, where we said we want fifty percent view. Here you want the regular view because yeah. Then you got. It. And the last thing, right, the bougie, right, we talked about. Mm -hmm. Ideally, when do you want to use it? I, I, honestly, if you have it, use it the first time because you don't know what you may see. So use it right away. How do I know I'm in the right place? Hold on. Hold on. Right vein right. stem bronchi. Right. right. That's going on the stomach. Uh, I think. Stomach, you lose it. I think we showed uh, all the things we have. Can you see if there's anything else I want? Oh, there's one thing I wanted. I do want to show you. So we have a patient, and we are pre-optionating the patient, right? So how about you guys come over here, right? Uh, you grab it, right? And we put the OPA, so we sized and we measured and we insert the OPA, and we are pre -oxygenated. So we have pre and then, and then what happens is, let's say you've been pre for two minutes, and your SAT is not going up at 89%. You've been doing it for two minutes. All right, guys, wrap it up. Yeah? Squeeze. So what's the problem? There's probably a shunt, right? Mm -hmm. right? So how do you remedy it? You introduce what? The beat. The beat problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you do the same procedure for two minutes, right, to get it to 100. So, you said, can you repeat that? So, if you pre oxygenate a patient for okay. two minutes and you said didn't go up, they probably have a shunt, okay. meaning there's, there's blood flow without oxygen coming in, yeah. right? So, you connect your P valve, dial it to 5 to 10, mm -hmm. do the two minutes again, and they said you should go up. Okay. Right?